Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your daily analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading session dated Wednesday 5th of November. I'm recording this video 6.30 in the evening New York time on the 5th New York time. And again, here's our daily chart for the S&P. We've had sideways movement for Wednesday. I am still expecting overall upwards movement this week for a final fifth wave. The target remains unchanged. On the daily chart today, the only thing that's changed is I've added this parallel channel because it's a little difficult now to see it on the hourly chart. I'm redrawing this channel now using Elliott's second technique. When the fourth wave is not contained in the channel, this is another way to use it. Draw it from the low of 2 to 4 pink and then place a copy on the high of 3 pink. Nicely shows where upwards movement found resistance here. And I think we can use the lower edge of this channel, which you'll see next on the hourly chart, as an indication where downwards movement may find support. I think the fifth wave is most likely to end midway in this parallel channel. Let's have a look at this on the hourly chart where the low for 4 and the high for 3. Is this low down here and this high up here. So here's our triple zigzag for wave 4 pink and now within wave 5 we may have had one and a double zigzag for a second wave may be complete. I have a question about the C wave within wave Y orange though. On the five minute chart it looks like it might not be complete and if we see movement above 1405.86. At that stage, we can have more confidence that two green would be over and three green would be underway because at that stage, the C wave in here would have to be over. So 1405.86 is a reasonably important price point for us for tomorrow. While price remains below that confidence point, there's a possibility that this final C wave in here is not complete and 2 green may move price lower. If it does that, I'd expect it to find support at the lower edge of this channel. If it does move lower, the short term target will also move a little bit lower. At 1422, if 2 green is over here and 3 green has begun, it will reach 1.618, the length of wave 1 green. After the third wave is complete, I'd expect a fourth wave correction to move price sideways and take up probably one to three sessions and not move price back into wave one green price territory. After that, a final upwards wave towards our target for this whole movement to end, which remains exactly the same as yesterday. At 1441, wave five pink will reach 0.618, the length of wave three pink, and at 1443, wave C blue in its entirety will reach equality in length with wave A blue. So that's a, got a fairly good probability. If downwards movement breaches the support line and moves price below 1396.56, I can't see at this stage how that could be a continuation of wave 4 pink because a triple has the maximum number of corrective structures that you can have within a correction. You can't have four, so if we've already got three complete here, it really has to be over. So any movement below 1396.56 in the next session or so would put quite a lot of doubt on this wave count. It might, it might be then that we could have had the end of primary B up here and a major trend change could have occurred. At this stage, I think that's pretty unlikely. We have absolutely no indication or confirmation of a trend change. We should assume the trends remains we should assume the trend remains the same until proven otherwise. So I am expecting most likely the start of a little bit of an increase in upwards momentum as momentum gathers for a third wave tomorrow or slightly less likely but entirely possible a little bit more downwards movement first before that third wave begins to the upside. That's all for me today with your S&P analysis and I hope that all members are having a fabulous day.